Our next guest on Football Americas, Lindsay Horan. She wears the number 10 for the U.S. women's national team, fresh off winning a Champions League title as well with Lyon in France. Lindsay, welcome back to the show. Great to have you. Uh, thank you for having me again. Right, Lindsay, last time we had you on the show, we had an award for you. You were U.S. Soccer's Player of the Year. No award tonight, but we can look back at your goal on Saturday against Nigeria. Won a 4 in a 4 nothing win. Walk us through it, because as we would say on this show, it was a very well-taken goal there in the 25th minute. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I think uh, it was bobbled around for a while until it actually got to me from from Soph. I think she did a good job there. Um, but yeah, I saw the defender coming in, and I thought I would try to try to bring it back on my left my left foot, which I normally don't do. And I, I tried it out this game, and it worked. So <laughs> my, I might become a 1v1 uh, dribbler, which my boyfriend says I'm not. So. <laughs> and overall, then, how would you rate the performance against Nigeria in Kansas City? Yeah, I think it was good. Obviously, you know, we're going into the World Cup year and each game um, we play in, each camp that we're in is, is so, so very important. Um, I think, you know, coming off a 4-0 win is, is, is great, but the way that we played, especially in the first half, I think, you know, showed a little bit more of our class, like a little bit more patience in the way we moved the ball. Obviously, I think towards the end of the game, we could have been a little bit better and limited their chances. But again, we build off of it. We learn. Uh, we have another game here. and. And then players got to go back to the NWSL and I'm, I'm off. <laughs> Lindsay, let's talk CONCACAF W Championship because it was the first major tournament for a large chunk of the squad. In fact, there's not a lot of players on the team now that were around when y'all won it all back in 2019. I wonder just how big was the victory winning that tournament for this group, given the fact that they haven't maybe had that experience of lifting a major trophy? Um, I think it was huge. <clears throat> Obviously, like you said, we have so many new players, so many new faces, um, you know, trying to change a little bit of our culture, the way we play, um, everything that's going into it. And I think each game was different in qualifying and difficult in their own ways. I think obviously the last game against Canada is always is going to be the is going to be the hardest and and for me, the most fun, um, you know, playing against a quality team. And obviously they won the Olympics and, you know, not much so like revenge it was more so you know we just want to win we want to win every single every single game we play every single tournament we play in and and that was the most important for us but playing the way that we wanted to as well so i think that was big i think that was you know impactful for us moving into this this year okay i know you said it wasn't revenge there but just how important was it to beat canada especially given all the success that they had at the olympics i think i mean you can ask any of us or ask any of the the canada players that's always, you know, going to be a rival game, and it's always going to be a huge game, and you want to beat them as bad as you possibly can. Um, but again, I think for us, it was just like we want to play the way that we want to play, and insert us there, and actually like go out with a bang, and especially with that, you know, long trip um, as well. Again, I don't think we were thinking as much about the Olympics, but more so, just we always want to beat Canada, and we always want to win. So we we just reiterate that. During the CONCACAF W Championships, we heard from your manager, Vladko Ananovsky, said you weren't World Cup ready just yet, but you would be come the summer of 2023. Just how far is this team, do you think, from being ready for the next World Cup? Yeah, I think, like I said before, you know, we, I don't know exactly how many camps we have before the World Cup, but each camp is, you know, we have to do everything we possibly can to make ourselves ready if we're going to go play the World Cup tomorrow. Um, and that means every training session, every meeting, every every game, we're full focus and, and we're focused on this team and, and what we're doing to prepare ourselves for the World Cup. And I think the more and more we're together and the more and more we emphasize that, we know that, you know, it's getting down to the wire and this year is going to go by very quickly leading up to the World Cup. So we need to be ready at all times. And each game that we play, it's like we're playing a World Cup game. And I think that's the most important for us. And, and we're building off of every single one and, and hopefully getting better in the process. Of course, when it comes to the World Cup, Lindsay, you guys are the defending champions, but I'm sure you're looking around, seeing at the other teams that could be a threat. I wonder how much of the European championships you watched this summer and what you thought of the level, especially from the teams that were left at the end of that tournament. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. Again, um, congrats to England for, for their win and, and at home as well. It has to be you know, such an incredible feeling for them. I think they're obviously going to be a powerhouse. They always are. 
Um, you know, you see teams like France and Spain, the way they play. <clears throat> Honestly, all teams in the Euros, you know, they brought something different and you can see the women's game growing. So it's like, you know, who's really like the top, you know, five to 10 teams now. It's it's incredible. You can't just like pick them out as easily as you could before. So I don't think I can just say, you know, the France, Germany's, England's as much as I used to. You know, there's so many teams now that can actually present a threat and, and you have to be ready for it. I think you know, that's why these games that we have now or even in CONCACAF, they're so important for us because, you know, it's we, we can learn off of them and we can build off of those. To that end, Lindsay, let's talk a little bit about your role in this team. Usually when we talk about your role, it's more, is she a six? Is she an eight? Is she a 10? Uh, but I'm thinking here off the field, uh, what is your role with this group? You know, we know that they're kind of veteran players, Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, just to name a few, uh, who are there for their leadership. But do you feel like this is now finally your team? Um, well, I'll never say that, but I do think I've stepped into a, a greater role um, as a leader on this team. And, you know, obviously we have those players that we still, you know, look to in, in certain situations. And I think P and, and Becky and Kelly and Alex are so great, uh, great in that bringing that experience that they've always had and also taking us under their wing and, and helping us prepare for, you know, cycles to come where, you know, we're in that role and we're the leaders on the team and and people are obviously going to look to us. Um, so I think that's huge. Um, and it's been a cool mix, you know, now in qualifying and, and here because we have to actually start stepping into those roles. And I think we can help the younger generation coming up too. So that's, you know, super exciting for, for us and, and for me, you know, on the field, off the field. All right, let's focus in a little bit on your club situation. Of course, you make the move to Lyon mid-season, come out with a Champions League title for your efforts. Walk us through the decision, just kind of what led you to the move to head back over to Europe. Yeah, uh, best decision ever. Um, honestly, you know, the first time I went to PSG, I, could, I, I didn't win a thing. And I would tell you right now that that was the best decision I made because, you know, what it prepared me for, the experience I got for three and a half years at PSG, and the football it, it turned me into, you know, it was it was so incredible. And now, you know, fast forward to going to Lyon, it's it's such a different experience at a different age, um, you know, with me playing at a different level. And, you know, it turned out amazing to start. You know, you, I go and win two trophies with Lyon and obviously I came, you know, mid-season. So it feels a little bit different and, and weird, but I think I was able to help impact the team. Um, more than I, I thought I could um, coming in mid-season. And, and it was a dream come true. You know, I've, I've dreamt of winning the Champions League all my life. And yeah, it's, it's just surreal. It's still, still, you know, it gives me goosebumps thinking about um, being able to lift that trophy at the end of the year, so. Of course, one of the great players you play with at Lyon, also your teammate with the U.S. Women's National Team, Katarina Macario. You got to see her up close and personal in her development, obviously, uh, she's hurt now, but what do you think of her as a player and her future with the national team? No, it's huge. Um, I think Kat is, you know, very different than any of the forwards that we have here with the national team. She brings something different every single day. Um, also, she's got that little Brazilian flair in her as, as well. Super chill and, you know, great personality to have around. Um, and I, I really enjoy, you know, having her at Leon as well. Um, you know, it's good for me. It's good for her. I hope I can help her learn, but um, it's also nice being able to play with someone that you're going to play with with your national team. Um, that helps the chemistry and everything. And, you know, I think she's doing great in her rehab as well. So, you know, positive, positive vibes for her because we need her and, uh, you know, for both Leon and, and the national team. Lindsay, I can hear it in your voice as you talk about winning the Champions League. Is that now kind of the pinnacle, the accepted pinnacle among players for the top of the women's game? I feel like for a while it was the NWSL maybe winning an NWSL championship. Do you think now the Champions League is really the pinnacle of the women's club game? Me personally, yeah. I think, you know, obviously playing in Europe, it's different. Like you play in the NWSL, you can't go out and win a Champions League. It's just different. Um, so I don't like comparing, you know, an NWSL trophy to a Champions League because I just don't think it's fair. Um, but, you know, in Europe, you're playing against all the best all the best clubs in Europe. And that's what makes the trophy, you know, so incredible. And I think I said this after the Champions League final, it's like I grew up watching, you know, men's Champions League 
I wasn't able to watch Women's Champions League, but that was always the pinnacle of club. Like sometimes it's it's even like overweighing the the World Cup for men. You know, it's you're you're there day in day out with your club team, so this means so so much to them. Um, so I think for now, you know, being in it and and playing with Lyon and and winning a Champions League, it's that was everything. I couldn't stop crying after the game because I like I've wanted it so so bad. And all these girls that have won it like five times are like, <laughs> look at this girl bawling her eyes out. But no, nah, it's it's true. It's it's you know it's a dream. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+.